A handful of dust. Tony Last is a country gentleman, living with his wife Brenda and his eight-year-old son John Andrew in his ancestral home, Hedden Abbey. The house is a Victorian pseudo-Gothic pastiche described as architecturally devoid of interest by a local guide book and ugly by his wife, but is Tony's pride and joy. Entirely content with country life, he is seemingly unaware of Brenda's increasing boredom and dissatisfaction, and of his son's developing waywardness. Brenda meets John Beaver and, despite acknowledging his dullness and insignificance, she begins an affair with him. Brenda starts spending her weeks in London, and persuades Tony to finance a small flat, which she rents from John's mother, Mrs. Beaver, an unscrupulous property developer. Although the Brenda Beaver liaison is well known to their London friends, Tony remains uxorious and oblivious, attempts by Brenda and her friends to set him up with a mistress are absurdly unsuccessful. Brenda is in London when John Andrew is killed in a riding accident. On being told that John is dead, Brenda at first thinks that Beaver has died, on learning that it is her son John, she betrays her true feelings by uttering an involuntary thank God. After the funeral, she tells Tony that she wants a divorce so that she can marry Beaver. On learning the extent of her deception Tony is shattered, but agrees to protect Brenda's social reputation by allowing her to divorce him, and to provide her with £500 a year. After spending an awkward but chaste weekend in Brighton with a prostitute contriving divorce evidence, Tony learns from Brenda's brother that, encouraged by Beaver, Brenda is now demanding £2,000 a year, a sum that would require Tony to sell Hedden. Tony's illusions are shattered. However, the prostitute brought her child with her who can establish that Tony did not commit adultery and the blackmail fails. Tony withdraws from the divorce negotiations, and announces that he intends to travel for six months. On his return, he says, Brenda may have her divorce, but without any financial settlement. With no prospect of Tony's money, Beaver loses interest in Brenda, who is left adrift and in poverty. Meanwhile, Tony has met an explorer, Dr. Messenger, and joins him on an expedition in search of a supposed lost city in the Amazon rainforest. On the outward journey, Tony engages in a shipboard romance with Therese de Vitre, a young girl whose Roman Catholicism causes her to shun him when he tells her he has a wife. In Brazil, Messenger proves an incompetent organizer. He cannot control the native guides, who abandon him and Tony in the depths of the jungle. Tony falls ill, and Messenger leaves in their only canoe to find help, but is swept over a waterfall and killed. Tony wanders in delirium until he is rescued by Mr. Todd, a British Guianan who rules over a small extended family in a remote clearing in the jungle. Todd nurses Tony back to health. Although illiterate, Todd owns copies of the complete works of Charles Dickens and asks Tony to read to him. However, when Tony's health recovers and he asks to be helped on his way, the old man repeatedly demurs. The readings continue, but the atmosphere becomes increasingly menacing as Tony realizes he is being held against his will. When a search party finally reaches the settlement, Todd arranges that Tony be drugged and kept hidden, he leads the party to believe that Tony has died, and gives them his watch to take home as evidence. When Tony awakes he learns that his hopes of rescue are gone, and that he is condemned to read Dickens to his captor indefinitely. Back in England, Tony's death is accepted, Hedden passes to his cousins, who erect a memorial to his memory, while Brenda marries Tony's friend Jock Grant Menzies.